Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. I hope you find a Zen Fit. Let's see if the one I have today fits you. The title of this talk is Break Out of Your Corset. So, I bet a lot of you don't even know what a corset is. <laughs> I've been watching the marvelous Mrs. Uh, Maisel. Let me get my watch here. I keep forget. This is my... Uh, Father's timepiece. Uh, of course, it's backwards because I'm in a mirror here. And this uh, Elgin watch was given to my father when he graduated from Annapolis in 1929. And uh, I had it restored. And uh, it works. Beautiful watch. Uh, when men had clocks, watches, if you notice, particularly. Yeah, with the, the wardrobes of men, men wore vests. It was like their suit and their vest was kind of like a tailored armory, you know, armor. And you would have the watch chain across the vest in the pockets of the vest. And you would have your timepiece. And so to get a timepiece at graduation meant that, aha, now you have control of time. You are a master of time now. And here's your watch piece. And so the man is always checking the time, checking the schedule. You're late, you're early. What's wrong with you? You couldn't be a few minutes early? You couldn't be, you know, and I've been watching marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And there are many levels to this. Um, and the one I want to talk about today is liberation from the corset of time. Now, in, in, this, in, in the 50s and before, uh, men had control of time. And if you have control of time, you have control of women. Oh, she's not here yet. Why isn't she here? I've been waiting for five minutes. You couldn't be a few, you couldn't get your shoes on in time. You know, the whole thing. The whole comedy is, is that the man's on time and the women are late. The women have their own time. So the watch, though, the women don't wear watches. It's, figuratively speaking, in this world where men, what time is it, dear? You have the watch, you see. You're in control of time. So this whole comedy, the marvelous Mrs. May, is about a woman who breaks out from this corset of a male controlled life. And this is, uh, she's in a Jewish family, which is very patriarchal in the sense that the husband and the father are the ones who control time. And they're always complaining. <laughs> and they're always upset because the women are not on time. <laughs> <You see? laughs> so it's gotta be on, it's gotta be in this control, you see. And so the dance, you see, is that the women are out of control and the men are in control and they're always trying to control. The women are figuring out how to ways to get out of control and the men want to pull them back and make them get them into control, you see. So this whole comedy, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, is about a woman who gets liberation through being a stand-up comic. And in her comedy, she uses her everyday life Ironically, you see. And uh, so she makes her everyday corset the corset of everybody. Everybody's got some kind of a corset they're struggling in, some kind of double bind. See, a corset is kind of like a straitjacket. <laughs> in that the more you struggle with it, the more you can't get it off. You know, that whole thing, it's a, it holds you in. When I got married in 1960, uh, my wife was uh, a 50s girl, uh, stockings, uh, gloves, hat, corset, you know, the whole catastrophe. And then if you notice in the 60s, it was a letting go of that. The whole thing, the whole corset unraveled. The whole corset of keeping women controlled by time in the male unraveled, you see. And it's still unraveling. It's still unraveling. 
But the beauty about the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is that it's put in very uh, stark contrast, humorously. The women in the 50s, Mad Bryn was about this too, but if you look back at the 50s, uh, women looked like flowers. <laughs> And their whole purpose in life was to attract a bee. Oh, he's attracting. He's, she's attractive. To get a doctor. You know? Oh, she, she caught a doctor. <laughs> you see, the whole thing was built on that. The women's power was her ability to attract. If you couldn't attract a man, you had no power. And if you couldn't keep him, you had no power. So the female power was in the power of attraction. Male power was in the power of doing things. He can do something for you. He can hurt you. He can do something. That's power, you see. Male power was doing. Female power was attracting. And it was carefully defined like that. Now it's getting all mixed up, you see. It's not one or the other. Now it's all getting confused, and that's driving a lot of people crazy. They become Trump fans. <laughs> they become conservative. You know, which means... Put that corset back on. The fundamentalist is somebody who wears a moral corset. You get that? A moral corset. Everything is tied up. Everything is tight. You, you know, everything is controlled. Hold in, hold your breath in, don't breathe. <laughs> but the, uh, <coughs> so the marvelous Mrs. Basil, First of all, she uses her own name in her routine rather than a fictitious name. That was a big change. Uh, the, the popular female comic of the day said, oh, don't use your real name. Put on a costume. Be fat. Be funny. Be a clown, you see. Uh, don't, don't be yourself. Uh, be a clown. You know, then people will laugh at you. Then people will like you. If you're a clown, if you, if you make yourself up, into uh, funny, you know, like Minnie Pearl or something. You know, be, be, a, be a clown. Uh, and so uh, uh, Mrs. Maisel found, made a routine out of that. What? What's the matter with me? You know, why can't I be myself? And so when she ended her routine, she said, I'm Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> so what's ironic about that is that she got divorced and could not and would not remarry because her husband would not let her be a comic. He didn't he didn't like her getting up and making fun of her personal life, which included him, you see. He couldn't stand the embarrassment. He couldn't stand what people are thinking about him, what other men are thinking about him, you see. So it's interesting that both men and women in this corset are worried about what people think. Uh, the women want women want men to think about them, and men want other men to be uh, ad to admire them. You see, so both men and women are worried about what men think about. <laughs> you see. Anyway, uh, so this is the 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 breakout you see of Mrs. Uh, Maisel is through uh, comedy, is through making fun of your corset, making fun of your personal dilemma, making fun of your catastrophe. <coughs> this is Zorba. You dance on the ashes of your expectations. You dance on the ashes. You dance on your funeral pyre. You dance on your funeral pyre. Uh, this is the, uh, the myth of the phoenix bird, uh, the fire bird that rises out of its own ashes. So a comedian, a stand-up comedy, is a metaphor for rising up out of your own funeral pyre. You burn yourself up on stage. You light yourself up, you see, and you burn yourself up right there and you laugh and you get people to laugh at it. You burn the corset up right there, you see. <laughs> So it, so this, this, this so marvelous Mrs. Maisel is, is a metaphor for your own corset, your own liberation, you see, and a path through it, and a path and a way 
to be liberated and to break out from the corset of our conditioned social roles that are imposed upon us by family, by culture, by religion, by society, you see. Breaking out and being free and to speak your word and to be liberated, to make your word flesh and blood, you see. That's the message of Jesus. Not to conform to the words, to somebody else's word, not to conform to your role, not to, not to suffer and be squeezed in a corset, you see, uh, but to be yourself. But in order to be yourself, you have to use the corsets that's given to you. <laughs> to be yourself, to be true, to speak your word, you have to use what's given, and what's given is your corset is your catastrophe, is your neurosis, you see. So you use your neurosis to get free from your neurosis. And you do that through irony, through the funeral pyre. Instead of being burnt up, you light the fire. <laughs> Instead of other people crucifying you, you hammer the nails in, you see. If other people call you, you know, whatever people tag you, Trump did this. In other words, uh, uh, no, I don't know Trump. Well, Trump did, well, never mind. I don't want to get into Trump. Forget that. Forget that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a, a Zen fit in your life today. And thank you for dropping in.